Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's JPR, and welcome back to another video. So, it's certainly been quite a while since the last iteration of What Happened To, and I decided to reach out through the YouTube community tab to ask what topic you all were most interested in, and the most popular response I received was What Happened to Pokemon Z. And I can certainly understand why. The way that Game Freak moved on from Generation 6 and proceeded with Sun and Moon, leaving a lot of questions unanswered, such as Zygarde's role in Kalos' lore, the locked power plant doors, and mysteries like the Lumi Ghost Girl is still one of the most puzzling decisions they've ever made without much light being shed on the subject. But what if I told you that we know more about it than you may think? But there is something even more important than Pokemon Z that you should know about, that being how NordVPN can help protect your internet security. No matter what type of Wi-Fi connection you're using, your network can easily be breached by hackers if you're not protected. Luckily for you, NordVPN provides more than 5,000 lightning-fast servers across the globe to help protect your data from being stolen. And with their new threat protection feature, keeping you clear of infected files and web trackers, your internet experience will be the cleanest it's ever been. But NordVPN is no one-trick pony. It can easily change your IP address to allow you to bypass blocked games and movies in your country. It's also perfect for traveling if you want to keep access access to the content you had before too. And right now you can get yourself a two-year subscription of NordVPN at a massive discount using my link in the description below, nordvpn.com slash jpr. Thank you NordVPN for sponsoring, back to the video. Many wonder if Pokemon Z was scrapped mid-development or the project ever existed to begin with. As ridiculous as it sounds now, many people even thought that Gen 6 was purposely left incomplete with only 72 new Pokemon being introduced so that a Gen 6 and a half could come out at some point. It probably doesn't work like that, but hey, it's a thing that people actually believed. Now, Gen 6 was a period of great change in the Pokemon franchise, as I discuss in another video that you should check out, but after this one, of course. Not only did the Pokemon franchise have to make the incredibly late jump to 3D, but they also began a pattern of releasing a game every year for the next decade. Well, every year except 2015, the year that most people believed Pokemon Z would be released. Now, there is one extremely important thing that you should know about Game Freak going forward. They are a studio with two separate teams working on games at the same time. A more experienced team that at the time was headed by Junichi Masuda, and a lesser experienced team that at the time was headed by Shigeru Omori, who has since replaced Masuda as the series' main director as of Sun and Moon's release. So in 2013, Junichi Masuda's main team finished and released Pokemon X and Y, and immediately started development on Pokemon Sun and Moon to be released in 2016. Seeing as how 2016 was the series' 20th anniversary and fans were highly anticipating a new generation, this date was likely set in stone from the beginning of development. At this point in time, the B team, headed by Shigeru Omori, was already working hard on Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire to be released in 2014. According to an interview with Masuda, we know that development on Oras started just after Black 2 and White 2's release. So yeah, while you were running around Unova enjoying the last sprite-based generation, stuff like Mega Rayquaza was being conceptualized, which is kind of funky to think about. Makes you really wonder what they're working on right now. But at any rate, it became clear that as Sun and Moon and the 2016 deadline approached, all hands would be needed on deck to help get the game shipped on time. And as mentioned earlier, this is where the transition from Masuda to Omori as the series head director also occurred, so it was likely a more hectic transition than most generations. It's already very apparent from areas like the Ultra Space Hallway and the Bare Bones Victory Road that the initial Alola games definitely had to cut some corners near the end, which the Ultra games primarily worked on restoring. Speaking of the Ultra games, these had to have started development in 2015 with a B team, now being led by Kazumasa Wow. I know, it's weird, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon were in development before Sun and Moon came out, but just stay with me here, because it gets worse. Added on top of this, there were already rumblings that Nintendo's new console, the NX, or the Switch as we know it by now, would soon be releasing. With this in mind, the B team also had to start work on Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee as the series' first ever mid-generation console jump. Development on these games wouldn't officially start until 2016, but still, this meant that Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon now had to be finished as soon as possible. And bear in mind, this is all happening while more experienced members from the B team, like Omori, are now being pulled over to the A team to work on Sun and Moon. If you thought your Mondays were stressful, imagine walking into work with three completely different games in development and not knowing which one you'd be working on that day. 
The third game in this equation, of course, being Pokemon Z, which was not only the last letter of the alphabet, but also the last thing on Game Freak's to-do list. I mean, come on, an enhanced version for two-year-old games releasing just before 2016, one of the biggest years ever for Pokemon? Naturally, this project was going to fall by the wayside. But I can already hear speculation from the comments. JPR, how can you be convinced that Pokemon Z was even a thing? This is all purely speculation, right? Well, up to this point, yes. But there is some hard evidence to back up that another Kalos game was planned. That we'll be getting to later. Let's start with some softer evidence first. Truth is, other than Masuda, Omori, and Iwao, there is one other director in Game Freak's Hall of Fame, and you probably know his name. Shigeki Morimoto. Yes, the same Morimoto who you fight at the end of most modern Pokemon games, and the same Morimoto who designed Mew and added it into the Gen 1 games. He was head director for both Pokemon Emerald and Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver, and has been involved in basically every Pokemon game in some fashion. Well, except for one game that he was curiously absent for, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. From 2013 to 2016, there is a rather strange gap in Morimoto's resume, which is likely the time that he spent leading the project on Pokemon Z. Seeing as how Iwao had just finished Black 2 and White 2 and was beginning significant work on both Oras and Sun and Moon, Masada went straight from X and Y to working on Sun and Moon, and Omori was transitioning from Oras to Sun and Moon. Logically, Morimoto is the only one who could have headed the Pokemon Z project. And since the game was never released due to lack of time and resources, we have a reason for this mysterious gap in his resume. Or maybe he just flew to Hawaii for research purposes. But, uh, who am I kidding? Japanese people don't ever take vacations that long. Still not convinced? Well, this is where the hard evidence comes in. In 2020, Pokemon betas and other confidential documents were being leaked left and right. In the case of the source code leak for Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, all of Game Freak's commits from 2013 to 2017 were leaked along with it. And in these commits, we can see clear as day that between Ruby and Sapphire's remakes and Sun and Moon, Kalos Reserve 3 and Kalos Reserve 4 were planned to come out. That's right, it wouldn't have just been a Pokemon Z, it would have likely been sequels like Black 2 and White 2, or another duo of enhanced games like Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Though Personally, I think the latter was more likely after the disappointing sales of Black 2 and White 2. This is also likely the reason why in the XYZ arc of the anime, there was a red core Zygarde and a blue core Zygarde. One likely from an XZ version, and one from YZ. Both of these could become 50% Zygards that later combine into the 100% form we saw later in the anime. This approach the Zygarde makes way more sense in my opinion than the revision made to it in Sun and Moon where it actually has five different cores. Because how on earth does that math add up? Is there a 250% Zygarde out there that I just don't know about? One snake and four dogs is still only 90%, which, what a coincidence, almost 90% of people watching this video aren't subscribed, so maybe you can help out with that. At any rate, I have to believe that the anime's original interpretation of Zygarde is the correct one. Because it, and likely the rest of the anime-exclusive Kalos story, came from the scrapped duo of games. Other than the Best Wishes series, which got off track due to an unforeseen earthquake, XY is the only series where the plot revolving around the villains and the legendary Pokémon drastically deviates from the games. Maybe it's just because Lysander unearthing a massive murder weapon was a bit too dark to adapt to a children's TV show, but I think it's most likely because this arc of the anime was just a slightly altered version of the plot from the scrapped Pokémon XZ and YZ. Plus, the writing in this arc is actually good, which is something I don't normally expect from the anime staff. Sorry, but it's true. Now, a lot of people conflate the idea that Ash Greninja and Zygarde's new forms both originated from the anime and were always meant to be added later in Sun and Moon, but I firmly disagree. I think it's very evident based on the Zygarde material that we later received in Sun and Moon that these concepts were infinitely more fleshed out and intended to be used in a prior game. Ash Greninja, on the other hand, just so happened to be a plot device added into the anime at the same time. I seriously doubt it was a Game Freak creation that has anything to do with Zygarde or the Scrap Kalos games. Maybe if more Game Freak files get leaked with artwork of Serena Delfox and Clement Chestnut, I might reconsider, but until then, no. Beyond that though, I think other evidence of a scrapped Kalos game would be Volcanion completely getting shafted as the designated 2016 mythical Pokémon, the rather unconventional reveal of Zygarde's core form at the end of the Hoopa movie in Japanese theaters, and of course just the utter randomness of Zygarde appearing in the Alola games with so much content that was clearly out of place. Many thought that the introduction of Z-Moves was just adding insult to injury, although truthfully the Z in Z-Move is just a shortening of the Japanese word Zenryoku, which just means fully powered. 
In English, this was changed to Zenith, or the peak of one's power. But as we've clearly seen by now, the period from 2013 to 2017 was likely the most turbulent time in Game Freak's history, with projects that were rushed out, cut short, and had to make all sorts of last minute changes. And it's a time that we're still seeing the after effects of even in Generation 8. I think it's beyond clear that in the absolutely massive time crunch, the Game Freak's B team was stretched so insanely thin that something had to fall by the wayside. We can see this in the removal of the Battle Frontier, the lack of new content in the Ultra games, and the complete erasure of another Kalos game from the history books. Or at least an almost complete erasure. It truly is sad that we'll never get to experience Kalos in all of its glory, but at least now we're not totally in the dark. And that, my friends, is the story of what happened to Pokemon Z. Shout out to my newest channel members, Cosmic Vengeance, Wasabi, and Berserk Pixel. I greatly appreciate your support, and I appreciate you for watching all the way to the end of my video. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this one. I'll see you guys next time.